In this video, I'm going to derive an expression for the magnetic field, a distance capital R, from an infinitely long wire carrying a current capital I vector. For the purpose of our calculation, we'll take the current to be flowing in the positive x direction. To do this, we're going to utilize the Biot-Savart law. The Biot-Savart law says that an infinitesimal segment of current, let's say this little bit right here, uh, to find the magnetic field produced, say, here, due to this infinitesimal segment of current, we have some constants. Uh, we need to have the infinitesimal length of current. It's inversely proportional to the square of the distance from that little bitty infinitesimal current to the field point. And then also involved here is this cross product between the current and the unit vector pointing from the infinitesimal current segment to the location where we want to know the magnetic field. So all those things are important. Now, we've got to be careful with this cross product here. It has both a magnitude and a direction. I'll get to the magnitude later, but the direction has implications for the direction of the contribution to the magnetic field. That is, the direction of this is the direction of that. So that is, this little bitty infinitesimal current will produce a magnetic field at this location with the following direction. Put your fingers of your right hand in the direction of the current, curl them into the direction of the unit vector r hat, and this is the direction of the magnetic field out of the board at this point due to this. Now we should explore this a little bit further because what we need to do if we want to find the magnetic field at this point due to the entire infinite length of of wire, which is carrying current, we need to find the contribution of this segment, this segment, this infinitesimal segment, this infinitesimal segment, blah, 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 and so on, and add all those magnetic field contributions at this point up. Now, if they're all pointing in different directions, we'll have to break each of those contributions into appropriate components. So if, say, this thing was producing a magnetic field here that way, well, we probably need to break that into, say, uh, a Z component uh, or an X component, a Y component, a Z component, and so forth. Well, it turns out that all these segments produce a magnetic field at this point that are all, they're all pointing in the same direction. So let's just check that out for a couple of them. We've done this one, magnetic field's out. How about here? What about this bitty bitty segment? Stick my fingers of my right hand in the direction of the current curl them into the direction of r hat, again, out. And you could do that for segments anywhere along here, for the little infinitesimal current segments. They're all producing magnetic field contributions at this point that are out of the board. So that's nice. We don't have to worry about components. We can just basically uh, find the magnitude of this expression and add all those contributions up, because they're all pointing in the same direction. Okay. Now let's organize our calculation a little bit. Uh, I need to choose an origin. I'm gonna choose the origin right under this point where I wanna know the field. So if I wanna know the field here, the magnetic field, I'm gonna choose my origin right there. So here's the region of positive x, here's the region of negative x. I'm gonna use this as my exemplary uh, infinitesimal current segment. So that current segment is located x away from the origin, that will be important. The length dl of that little bitty current segment is dx in this coordinate system. Great. Uh, and so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start putting these things in, but first let's take the magnitude of the Biot-Savart law expression. So first of all, all the things that are vectors, all the scalars can come right out. So I've got the mu naught, the 4 pi, the little r squared, uh, the dl, and then I'm left with this. So the magnitude of this will be all that stuff times this little magnitude right there. Now, the magnitude i cross r hat, well, that's the magnitude of i. That's just i without the vector symbol. Magnitude of any unit vector is 1. Then I've got to take the sine of the angle between these two vectors. Well, look. That's this angle right here, that's theta. So I need the sine of theta. But the sine of theta will be equal to this sine of this angle here that I've labeled alpha. 
That's because the sine of any two angles whose sum is 180 degrees, all those sines are equal. Okay. So let me just go further with that. The sine of theta will equal the sine of alpha, and the sine of alpha will be opposite over hypotenuse. So capital R over little r. So we can now plug everything into this expression. So I'm plugging this into here, and then plugging everything else in there. So my dl becomes a dx. Well, I'll do that later. dl, dl. Uh, I've got my mu naught over 4 pi, mu naught over 4 pi. This expression had an i in it. It also had a capital R over little r, so there's my capital R. Here's three little r's, three factors of little r. There's one factor, and there's two more factors. So going from here to here is just this step. Now, I need to put everything into in terms of my variable of integration. As I've already said, the dl is a dx. Now this little r, which I'm cubing here, little r is just the square root of x squared plus capital R squared. That's this here. I need to cube that. So now I have that down there. So now I have a ready to integrate expression based on my Biot-Savart law. Basically, again, we use the fact that all the contributions to the magnetic field at this point from all the little current infinitesimals are pointing in the same direction. So I could take the magnitude of this expression and I'm just going to add up all those magnitudes knowing they're going in the same direction. Great. My, my wire extends from x equals minus infinity to x equals positive infinity. So when I integrate this, I integrate it on the left-hand side. That'll just give me mag magnetic field magnitude instead of just my infinitesimal of that. Integrating the right-hand side, I'll be integrating from minus infinity to infinity. All these constants have come out of the integral. So here's the integral that I have left. This integral, uh, we can outsource to Wolfram Alpha. It gives us 2 over capital R squared. I'll show you the outsourcing to Wolfram Alpha right now. Fade to Wolfram Alpha. So here's the input I gave Wolfram Alpha. Note that these little carrots represent power. So this means x squared. That means capital R squared. This is 1 over all of that to the 3 halves power. And I'm integrating from x equals minus infinity to positive infinity, where these little o's next to each other are a nice convenient way to represent infinity to Wolfram Alpha. So let's see what Wolfram Alpha spit out. First, it interprets our input, and we see that it interprets the input correctly. Here's the answer it spits out. And now note, the square root of 1 over capital R squared over the square root of capital R squared, all of that is just... 1 over r squared without a square root. So all of this, the result of that, is simply 2 over capital R squared. That is the result of our integral. Okay, we're back. So then you take this uh, result of the integral, put it with this, and you're left with the magnitude of the magnetic field, a distance capital R from an infinitely long wire, it's mu naught times the absolute value of the current, uh, divided by 2, divided by pi, divided by that capital R. All right, now, I, I want to emphasize that this is only exact if the wire is infinitely long. You're never going to have an infinitely long wire, so what happens if you have a finite wire segment? Well, this can still be in a, pro, a decent approximation. It's a good approximation if this distance, capital R, is small compared to the length of the wire. It'll be a crappy approximation if this distance is comparable to or bigger than the length of the wire. So use the approximation appropriately. If you have a finite length wire and you really need a finite length wire segment and you really need an accurate calculation, you'd need to put in the appropriate limits that are infinite. So if your segment that you're interested in starts over here at x equals minus half a meter, goes over here to x equals positive two-thirds meters, you put those in and then you could get an exact expression for the contribution of the magnetic field at this point due to that finite length segment. Okay, thanks for watching.